talk about independence in those days, we didn't speak about St. Lucia as an independent country. We spoke about St. Lucia within the Caribbean Federation. That was the big talk, Federation. Federation failed. Then we tried with the uh, Associated States, as they call them, hoping to get them closer together. We couldn't get that. We tried the Windward Islands. And while we were negotiating the Windward Islands, that's its coming, uh, coming in, into 1974. While we were negotiating for the Windward Islands to come together, and the first we start was say with freedom of movement, freedom to work from work permits, freedom to own land, etc., etc. While we're talking about that, Grenada went behind our backs and negotiated with the government, with the British government, for independence. And they gave them the independence, despite all the violence and all of this in Grenada. Uh, they gave them the independence. <coughs> so, what else? The next thing we hear, who is talking about independence? Dominica. Dominica is going independent. So what are we to do? Wait. So we, in 1974, we, we had elections in 74, which we won. Our program there, our political program was that together, if we can, alone if we must. So by 1974, it was alone because it must. So we started to, we informed, we went to the House of Assembly. First I went to the, we went to the party. We had a, a convention, party convention in Miku in 75 or 76. We had a party convention. We decided we are going into independence. We got a resolution passed in the party. We went to the parliament and presented the resolution in the parliament, of course, it was opposed then. Uh, and we then approached the British government to start negotiation for independence. The, we had this problem. We had a British government representative who had been in Botswana, that's in southern Africa, near to South Africa. And he was as racist and apartheid as, as they come. To him, black people shouldn't govern themselves. They, they can't govern themselves. Look what's happening in South Africa. Look what happened in Nigeria. Look what happened in Ghana. All this confusion. Now, so he became the ally or the Labour Party use him as their ally and every time they made a meeting and keep noise and make a demonstration he would send it up to the to the British and say you know is there going to be bloodshed in St. Lucia is there going to be this in St. Lucia and he delayed us to no end we went we went first they said fine you go back and show that the people really want it issue a white paper and this, discuss it all over the country. We did that. We went back, tell us another story. Until 1978, we went to the Constitutional Conference. Uh, we went to the Constitutional Conference in London and we agreed that we should we'd have our independence. We even set the date to the 13th of December. That was the date for independence. But the Labour Party at the time, they wanted elections before independence. And that has never happened. Jamaica got it without elections. Trinidad got it. Guyana got it. Grenada got it. Nobody ever, that was never imposed as a condition on any one of them. But it was sought to impose it as a condition to us. And the Labour Party objected, they demonstrated, they did all these things. Now, 
what had happened in, uh, in, in the Caribbean. There was a lot of turmoil. There was Grenada, there was Cuba, there was all of this thing. And they exploited that. They, they created a lot of confusion. There was coming to independence, uh, besides the, the demonstrations and whatever it is, coming to independence, they, are, they fermented strikes in the public services. Teachers strike, civil service strike, this strike, that strike, and trying to, to postpone it, try to impede it. But of course, the, the, the thing had passed to the British Parliament. There's nothing they could do to stop it. What they did was to, to impede the celebrations of it. The way we would have liked to have celebrated our independence. We didn't want to celebrate our independence on the threat of riots, the threat of that. that. The, for instance, the flag raising ceremony was to be the only place we had at the time was the Marshall Grounds, the Mindafilla Park, only place with the oak, big open space and such. We had to keep it on the, on, on the wharf. Why did we keep it in the wharf? Because of security reasons. The British will not allow Princess Alexandra, who was the royal representative, to drive through the Marshall Road lest she be ambushed, etc., etc. It's that type of fear. Not us, because we know that was nonsense. We would never do this. That's not St. Lucia. But that British government representative had instilled, had pushed in the minds of the British. There were going to be riots, etc., etc. So we had it low-keyed. Many people didn't, didn't have it as we'd like to have had it. Instead of had the, the big celebration for independence was ready, the carnival that followed it. Because it was a few days after the carnival was a few days after independence, we had a hell of a time. But for Joe's times it's really frightening because of the the threats that existed at the time, that there were going to be disruption, there's going to be this, going to be that. The, the customs and strike, we couldn't get people in. We had to get, had to send, send some people down there to take over from, from the, the customs, that their people get their baggage through. A lot of difficulties, it humiliated us. St. Lucians, it humiliated us. But I told them at the time with all of this, they, they came to give us very bad press. I used the occasion of the youth rally in 79 to set out our goals. I told them, told the children at the time, that we have to prove that not that we'll do no worse than those who ruled us before, not that we we'll do as good as they did, but we have to do better. GIS, so you better. GIS.